This video goes over the output processing and the fader page of the CQ18T digital mixer. The processing section for the outputs can be found on the fourth tab on the processing page. There are six mono outputs for the mixer. On each of the outputs, including the main left and right, there is a parametric EQ, feedback assistant, compressor, and limiter. The EQ type can be changed to a graphic EQ in the config page. The six mono outputs can be configured into three pairs of stereo outputs. Input send level allows the monitor signal to be independent or linked to the main left and right channel. Output source allows the signal to be sent to the monitor after it's been compressed. Inside this config page, the outputs can be set to either pre-fader or post-fader. Pre-fader mode sends the signal straight from the preamp stage. This means Turning down faders in the main left and right page will not affect the monitor level. Post fader mode sends the signal after the fader page. This means turning down the faders in the main left and right page will affect the monitor level. In the output processing section, the parametric EQ and compressor are the same from the input processing page, but the limiter and the feedback assistant are exclusive to the outputs. The limiter is simple, with threshold and gain reduction speed, with a plus 18 dB threshold. This is good for hearing and speaker protection against loud signals. When the feedback assistant feature is turned on, it automatically seeks out feedback and reduces that frequency to prevent it from developing further. There is also a manual mode with 16 bands that can be used to ring out the room. There are two modes for the feedback assistant, live mode and fixed. When live mode is turned on, it allows the EQ bands to recover to normal. The speed at which the bands recover can be set by adjusting this recovery dial. But if the mode is set to fixed, the EQ bands will not recover and continue to reduce the frequency even when the feedback is not audible. I can see this feature being used in time-limited situations and especially for beginners setting up in a new venue. It's not as good as a dedicated monitor engineer as the feedback is still audible for a brief moment. But it's very impressive that this is automated and does a pretty decent job at reducing feedback frequencies. Effects output. There is a new parametric EQ in version 1.2 that can be found in the effects page and is a simple two band EQ allowing filtering or shelving of bands. Both bands have a range of 20 Hz to 20 kHz with the plus or minus 15 dB gain range. This allows a high pass filter to be used to eliminate low reverb and delay frequencies which usually muddy a mix. The fader page allows us to mix all the inputs connected to the mixer. The channels are split into five subpages: inputs 1 to 8, 9 to 16, stereo in and effects, outputs, and mute groups and DCAs. Starting from the top, each channel displays the name and color set in the config page. Then the listen button, the pan slider, the main channel fader, the dB change amount, and the mute button. The listen button solos the signal in the headphones after the processing page. When this button is engaged, the channel is not soloed in the front of house mix. 
the pan slider allows the input to be positioned in the left-right spectrum. The middle smart rotary gets assigned to this function, which allows quick adjustment of the pan function. The main fader covers most of the screen and adjusts the volume to the main PA system. On the touchscreen models, up to five faders can be adjusted at the same time, although it's very tricky due to the small size of the screen. By pressing the faders only button, more space is available to make fader changes. Along with mixing the front of house PA system, this page can also control the level of the monitor outputs and sends to the four effects units. To switch between their different outputs and effects sends, press the send to button on top of main left right. It can be somewhat confusing to set the mix for the monitor outputs for beginners. So to help with this, I ask myself this question. What do I want output one to hear? Then I send the level for the output. Similarly, to send effects levels, I ask myself, which inputs do I want effects one on? Then I adjust the send level. With the recent version 1.2 update, Features like DCAs, mute groups and custom layer have been added to the digital mixer. These can be configured in the config page and by going to the control and network tab. Mute groups are useful as in version 1.1, muting all the outputs including the main left and right from one soft key was only possible by using the mixer in post fader mode. This was not always ideal. In the mute group section, all the outputs can be set to a mute group then assigned to a soft key. This acts like a master mute or a panic mute for all the outputs in case of emergencies. Very useful. The DCAs allow control over multiple faders at once. For example, in my choir I can assign all the singers to DCA1 and all the instrumentalists to DCA2. This condenses a large fader mix to just two faders, which allows me great control over the relative fader level to the assigned channels. Custom layer is probably my favorite feature in this update. This feature aims to help organize the fader page. As one inconvenience when connecting XLRs and jack to jacks to the mixer was the tab hopping I would have to do to change a fader level. With custom layer, I can position the jack to jacks right next to the XLR inputs, which when combined with the DCAs, allows for big changes to be made to the mix with just a few faders. I'd like to make a dedicated video on these features, so stay tuned for that. Here is a playlist of the videos I've made about this mixer so far. Thanks for watching.